Good day, esteemed listeners. Today, we embark on a journey into the intricate world of genetic control, exploring the fascinating realm of DNA and RNA. As A-level students, we are poised to unravel the molecular intricacies that govern life itself. As such, join me as we delve into the fundamental mechanisms shaping the blueprint of existence where the language of genes orchestrates the symphony of life. Let's look into DNA and RNA. DNA and RNA are polynucleotides. Polynucleotides are substances whose molecules are made of long chains of nucleotides that link together. Nucleotides is made up of a 5-carbon sugar DOXC ribose in DNA, ribose in RNA. And nucleotides is also is made up of a phosphate group. Next, a nitrogen which is contained base, adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. In DNA, adenine, guanine, cytosine, or uracil in RNA. And the base is usually referred to by first letters A, G, C, T, U. Basis means that A and G are purine bases made up of two carbon nitrogen wings. C, T, U means that cytosines, thymine, and uracils are pyramide bases made up of one carbon nitrogen ring. This is the example of the nucleotide diagram where it consists of phosphate group, pentose sugar, which is dioxyribose, and this is an example of organic basis is cytosine. Nucleotides can link together by the formations of covalent bond. Between the phosphate group of one and the sugars of another. So this takes place through a condensation reaction. Polynucleotides, this is a part of a polynucleotide where it consists of the phosphate group, pentose sugar that links with the the long chain of nucleotide that link together and also is also it links this is a link to another group phosphate group pento sugars and also the organic base in this case is adenine and another group it links to the carbon nitrogen rings and then you have another links to the thymine and hydrogen bond is RNA molecule usually made up of single strand and folded up on itself. Then a molecule is made up of two strands that have together by the hydrogen bond. And between bases on two strands. And the strands that run opposite directions, they are anti-parallel. So complementary base pairing is a hydrogen bonding and only occurs between A and T, which is for the adenine and thymine, and between C and G, cytosines, cytosines and guanine. This is called complementary base pairing. If you can see the double-stranded, where you have the link between the phosphate group pentose sugars, 
and then also the organic base is cytosine, which is linked to guanine, that is a hydrogen bond. So, so same thing goes to the adenine that links to thymine. And on the other hand, you also can see another group polynucleotide where thymine that links to adenine. And this is part of the double-stranded DNA molecule where you have the link together with the hydrogen bonds, which is the two strands of molecule twist around each other to produce a double pillip. Next, let's look into the DNA replications. New DNA molecules needs to be made before a cell can divide. The two daughter cells must each receive a complete set of DNA. The base sequences on the new DNA molecule must be identical with those on original set. DNA application take place in the nucleus during interface. Hydrogen bond between the bases along part of the two strands are broken and this unzip part of the molecule which is separating the two strands. It's actually this description is trying to explain the diagram on the below about the DNA replications where we have this unzip part of the molecule which is separating by the two strands. Okay. Nucleotides that are present in the solution in the nucleus are moving randomly around. By chance, a free nucleotide will bump into a newly exposed one with which it can form hydrogen bond. Free nucleotides therefore pair up with the nucleotides on each of the DNA strand, always A and T, if you can see, and C and G. C and G. These are the free nucleotide pair. And the DNA strand is always A come with the T and C with the G. And DNA polymerase link together the phosphate and deoxyribose group of adjacent nucleotides. If you can see, these are the DNA replications as per explained above. And this is called semi-conservative replication because each new DNA molecule has one old strand and one new one. You can see the this. The genetic code. Gene. Genes means that the sequence of bases in the DNA molecule is the code that determines the sequence in which amino acids are linked together when making a protein molecule. I repeat. The sequence of bases in the DNA molecule is the code that determines the sequence in which amino acids are linked together when making a protein molecule. A sequence of the DNA nucleotides that code for one polypeptide or for one protein is gene. Primary structure is the sequence of amino acid in a protein. It is a primary structure which determines three dimensional shape and its properties and the function. The primary structures is actually determine the sequence of amino acid in a protein. Example, the primary structure of enzyme determine the shape of active site and substrate which it can line. Triplet, the series of three bases in the DNA molecule is called a base triplet for one amino acid. The DNA strand that is used in protein synthesis is called template strand. Example, the sequence of amino acid coded by the template strand of particular DNA. This is in the form of degenerate. If you can see base in DNA, they have PAC, CDG, CAA, CDT. But in amino acid in polypeptide, they call it as methionine. Aspartate, valine, and glutamate. And there are about 20 amino acids due to four bases, where you have four, four to the power of three, you get the value of 64. Different possible combination of bases in triplet. 
and some amino acids are coded for more than one booklet. Example, they put SAAA, AAG, both code for amino acids, tiny lalanin. This is called the generic. Protein synthesis transcription will be explained later about this diagram. Okay, basically, uh, the previous diagram, the, the previous, this is slide is actually to explain about what is actually uh, indicated in this diagram. Okay, so protein are made of a made of a ribosome in a cytoplasm by linking them together, amino acid through peptide bonds. And the sequence in which the amino acid are linked is determined by the sequence of bases on the length of the DNA in the nucleus. This is recorded uh, in a process of transition. So, the first step in the protein synthesis is for the sequence of bases on the template strand of the DNA and to be used to construct a strand of messenger of RNA, also called mRNA. M means that messenger with a complementary sequence of bases and this is called transcription. If you can see from this, um, what is actually RNA polymerase is RNA nucleotide slot into place next to their complementary base on the DNA like this. The enzyme RNA polymerase link them together through sugar and phosphate group to form a long chain of RNA nucleotides or, or mRNA molecules. If you can see from page one, okay, so the mRNA molecule contain a complementary group of base sequence on the template strand of part of the DNA molecule. And each triple on DNA represented a complementary group of three bases on mRNA they call codon. codon. If you see from this, this is part of uh, molecule of DNA where in the nucleus the double helix of DNA is unzipped. It's actually the first one that I read is actually represent this diagram. Okay, as RNA nucleotide slot into a place next to the complementary base of DNA, you can see okay in a slot, the enzyme RNA polymerase link them together through sugar and phosphate group to form a long chain of RNA nucleotides or mRNA molecules. And then what happened in the nucleus, the double helix of the DNA is unzipped. You can see this is unzipped. And exposing the bases on each strand. Okay. There are four types of free RNA. We are talking about this. Four types of free RNA nucleotides in the nucleus with the bases A, C, G, and U. And the RNA nucleotides form hydrogen bond with the exposed bases on the template strand of the DNA. So, you can see the RNA nucleotides are linked together to form an RNA, RNA molecule. And then, the mRNA molecule contains a complementary copy of the base sequence on the template strand of part of the DNA molecule and each triplet on the DNA is represented by a complementary group of three base on the mRNA called a codon. 
this is about the protein synthesis of the process. They call it a transcription. What is happening inside the DNA and RNA. Okay, let's look into the clear pictures about the overview protein synthesis through the process of transcription and translation. Basically, this is the illustrating genetic information flow from DNA to RNA and to protein. In the process of transition, DNA is transcribed into mRNA, which is messenger RNA, using uracil instead of timing. mRNA and ribosome assembly, where in this process, mRNA and ribosome are subunit assembled. And then what happened next? tRNA and ontochondrons. tRNA is a transport RNA molecules with anticondons matching mRNA condons and carry specific amino acids. And then what happened? tRNA matching and ribosomes will do the process of bindings. tRNA binds to mRNA at the ribosome with condon and anti-condon matching, whereby when there is incorrect matches, lead to tRNA detachment. Next, what happened? Peptide bond formation. Peptide bonds form between amino acids, extending the growing protein change, and the ribosome moves along mRNA to facilitate the next tRNA binding. And finally, the process protein folding, the completed acid, amino acid change will undergo folding into its final three-dimensional protein structure. So this is basically the illustrating about the genetic information flow from the process of DNA to RNA and to become protein. This is a little bit about the differences between DNA and RNA. What is actually DNA? DNA, in a long name, is called dioxyribonucleic acid, whereas RNA is ribonucleic acid. Okay, what are the properties in DNA and the difference between DNA and RNA? DNA has a double-stranded helical structure, whereas RNA is typical single-stranded. DNA contains the sugar dioxyribose, whereas RNA only contains ribose. And third, DNA stores genetic information, whereas RNA plays a crucial role in protein synthesis as a messenger, remember mRNA, and also using the tRNA as a transfer RNA and ribosomal which is rRNA. And fourthly, what is DNA? DNA contains nitrogenous bases like adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Whereas in RNA contain nitrogenous bases like adenine, guanine, cytosine and uracil. Okay, that's all for today's presentation. Roughly, I hope you get the clear pictures what is actually DNA, genetic control, DNA and RNA is all about. Thank you for listening and please don't forget to subscribe to Jones Study Live YouTube channel. I really, really pray and hope that you are doing very well in your studies. Thank you very much.